Welcome to an exciting episode of Scotland Shop on the Sofa. We are joined by opera singer Jacqueline Bruce. Jacqueline takes part in many singing events around the globe and recently performed her concert Heritage, a celebration of Scotland at Tarpon Springs Performance Arts Centre. So welcome Jacqueline, it is an absolute pleasure to have you here virtually um, and we appreciate your time today to talk to us about your experience in performing traditional Scottish music. Oh, thank you so much for having me. What a honor to be in Edinburgh today. Yes. <laughs> if virtually. Um, so when did you decide you wanted to pursue a career in opera singing? Well, it's a funny story, actually. I was about six or seven years old. And it was, I'm pretty sure, a Saturday afternoon. And I was trying to look for children's programs on television or cartoons. And I came across this grand thing. And I was totally transfixed by it. Um, when my mother came home from grocery shopping, uh, I jumped up and down and said, what is this? This is incredible. Uh, and she said, I think that's an opera. And I said, that's what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> so wow. it's so uh, a very young age then. Yes, yes, it was very young. Uh, and of course, it was a family joke for a while. But yeah. the thing was, I had musical talent. I had a good ear. I could play by piano a little bit. And uh, I started taking voice lessons at 12. So it, it was in there and it was just sort of you know, soaking and marinating for quite yeah. a while. But yes, it was quite a, <laughs> quite that's a life. That's fantastic. Life. So, yeah, no, that's, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so we can see that your career has taken you all over the world to perform. It's sort of what performance has been most memorable for you, if there is one specific? Well, I'm going to say that it was my debut performance at the Staatsoper Stuttgart in Germany. I just got out of school. I just graduated with my master's degree from Curtis Institute in Philadelphia. So I was extremely green. And uh, they had me in these two lovely roles called the Sandman and the Dew Fairy in Hansel and Gretel. Very wonderful Christmas. Oh, fantastic, holiday. yeah. And um, I, of course, was extraordinarily nervous. Uh, but... It was such an incredible experience, and it was a returning production, so I had to learn my directions very, very quickly because I was the newbie, but mm -hmm. I did it. I had fantastic costumes. The orchestra was just phenomenal, and I made lifelong friends with my colleagues. It was just oh, amazing. fantastic. In a few days, you'll be performing um, your concert Heritage, a celebration of Scotland. So what inspired you to create this piece and perform it and take it sort of Further. Well, it began be as a memorial for my mother who passed away nine years ago. Uh, she was the Bruce. Um, okay. And she had a great love of her heritage, her roots, and she shared that with me. So it was very special. And I, I wanted to honor her in a special way. So it, it began small. I, I had a lovely concert in Berlin in 2018, and it really took off. It became quite popular. So I brought it to New York last year, as a matter of fact. And now here I am in Tarpon Springs, Florida. This is actually the second concert I'll be performing with this organization, but in a much larger venue. So okay. it's it's really quite wonderful that it has a life of its own now. Yeah, it's got legs and it's growing. Do you have any plans to bring it over to Scotland and perform it in Scotland? That is the dearest wish. Yeah, I'm hoping to bring it. Yeah, so bring it to Scotland. I, of course, perform it for my family in Dunfermline and, and maybe that even tour fantastic. with it. That would just be grand, of course. Yeah, that sounds wonderful. So uh, obviously you've done a lot of concerts, you've been involved in a lot. Um, in the lead up to a concert, what's your typical rehearsal schedule and preparation? Obviously vocal chords, do you rest them? What's your sort of preparation? Well, typically for a recital or a concert um, featuring just me and my pianist, um, I do a pretty concentrated two months of two rehearsals in a week. Um, if my pianist is local. In this case, my pianist is not local. He's actually in Connecticut, but he comes down every couple of weeks. So we started three months ago, and I would see him every couple of weeks. But in order to really feel more secure, I went up a couple of weekends ago and did a blitz of rehearsals with him to feel a bit more secure about the whole thing. So yes, and he'll be here, of course, Friday. We'll have a dress rehearsal and then we're going to do it <laughs> on Saturday. So. Very intense, isn't it? 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> you can all over and you can kind of relax a little bit. Just a little yeah. bit. <laughs> <laughs> and you also teach opera singing. Um, what's the most sort of rewarding part of teaching the next generation of singers? What's wonderful is being able to pass down this centuries old art form. It's so beautiful. It endures. Um, it is quite a discipline. Uh, it's a lifelong pursuit. So to be able to impart that to the next generation for them to carry the torch, so to speak, is important. It's about legacy. It really is a legacy art. And um, it is just as fulfilling when a student gets a concept because there are no keys to play or strings to pluck. Everything is mental. So it's quite abstract and uh, it can take a while to really click with a student and for them to get the mind body um, idea from all of it. But when a student gets a concept, it is just as fantastic as getting a standing ovation after a performance. Yeah. Really. It's, it's wonderful. It's a light bulb moment that they've just got it and they know it. Light bulb, yes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Thank you. So, what is your favorite song to perform and why? Well, I would say My First Love. That opera, by the way, that I told you about when I was a little girl uh, was La Boheme. And that was broadcast live from the Metropolitan Opera. Uh, and that filled my heart in a way I, I can't even describe. It's almost like religion. It's a funny thing. So yeah. anytime that I have anything to do with that opera, whether listening to it or singing it, is is an incredible experience. It's, it's like I said. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. So I would say that La Boheme is certainly my favorite opera, and my favorite aria is from that opera. It's called Si Mi Chiama No Mimi, and it is just... I, I, it's indescribable. Indescribable. I'm going to have to go and to <laughs> I did do a little bit of listening to opera singing before, um, but yeah, I'll have to go and listen to that one in particular. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You performed in many beautiful venues, including the Lincoln Center. What venue has been your favorite to perform at? Well, I would say it was Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. And the reason is it's, it's fantastically beautiful inside. And the acoustic is utterly perfect. And it felt like such a major achievement to be able to perform there. So I would say that was probably my most favorite up to date. Yes, so far, so far. I'm sure there'd be lots yeah. more to add. Yeah. And of course, as you said before, you are a Bruce and you come from your mom's side of a Bruce. Do you wear the Bruce tartan when you're performing or do you have any Bruce tartan? I have so much tartan. <laughs> <laughs> it's really the reason. Yeah, it's really the reason. I love, love, love wearing my tartan. I'm so proud. And uh, I actually have a gorgeous new green gown to show off the red uh, modern uh, Bruce tartan. So I have a sash. And so it, it is so much fun to get dressed up in my tartan and my pins and my jewelry. And I just feel amazing. It's such a fantastic connection to the family. So absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's what we like to hear here. <laughs> yes. So what advice would you um, give to people looking to be opera singers or perhaps start an opera singing as a new hobby or as a career? I would say go to as many concerts, recitals and operas as possible. Um, you really are getting your knowledge peaked and you're also getting all that interest um, and so many different voices out there, so many different styles as well. Um, I would also say finding a good voice teacher is important. Um, whether you're going to become a hobbyist or a professional, um, I would say also if you're able to perform in a local production, whether it be through school or through uh, uh, some kind of community effort, I would definitely recommend that. Go start small and then work your way up. Yeah. That's, that's what I would say. And it does take time. It's really not an instant thing. It takes years to hone a voice. Um, it takes, you know, real discipline to hone your craft, but it's absolutely worth it. It's really wonderful. I feel extremely privileged to do this. I'm yes. Always, always in awe when I hear so I'm an opera singer and their, their range is, is amazing. Is there anything else you'd like to add or tell us about? Um, 
just that I'm, I'm very excited about the concert on Saturday. Um, I, my dearest wish is, of course, as I told you, to bring it to Scotland, but of course to bring it worldwide um, yeah. because the music is so lovely and it's international because the composers come from all over the place and it's such a love letter you know, to Scotland. Scotland is very beloved in the world, particularly here in the United States. So, yeah, yeah that's what I would have to say. <laughs> that's brilliant. Thank you for joining us as we talk to Jacqueline Bruce. We hope you enjoy learning about more about the traditional Scottish music and the very talented performer Jacqueline. Check out our website, subscribe to our YouTube channel, email newsletter and social media to stay up to date on all our planned content. Thank you.